The United Sports Center in Columbus, Ohio for tonight's TBL matchup between the Columbus Condors and the visiting team, Detroit Hustle. I am Seth Donahoe and alongside me, Randall Smith Jr. Randall, it's been a hot weekend, but now we're here inside this cool building and ready for some basketball. It's been a very hot weekend. Um, I know you've been at some track games this, uh, this weekend and it's 90 degrees outside, but what better way to cool off by 
watching some good basketball. Yeah, so we here at a Score on Air Network did get a chance to broadcast the um, OHSAA track um, high school championships, um, and it was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, you, you know, it brings back some memories from when I ran track in high school, and well, ran jumped it's it's all the same uh, but it was a lot of fun but <laughs> let's worry about today's game here as the Columbus Condors coming in at eight and seven coming off of a win yesterday behind an impressive 58 points by Cody Ballard uh, helping them lead helping him lead his team to victory uh, over the Dayton flight and they're taking on the three and twelve Detroit hustle and uh, the Detroit hustle uh, they have a little bit of an injury bug going around is what it seems. Yeah, they have an injury bug as well as a couple players overseas. So you have D'Angelo Stewart, who's not playing today. You have uh, James Steele, who's not playing today. Those two got deals, I think, overseas. And then you have James Kelly, who's a 6'8 forward. He's out, too, because um, he's just injured. All right, and uh, we have the opening tip here. Richie Gordon tips it forward and a nice little set up play there, but Boo Osborne gets denied by Martel Warnham. Uh, Warnham joined out there by Dwight Burton, Jody Hill, Clifton Burrell, and Jawan Hampton. That's the starting five for the Detroit Hustle. As uh, that was Dwight Burton who couldn't finish out there for the Condors. Cody Ballard, Richie Gordon back into the starting lineup. Todd Brown, Tellen, Kellen Thomas, excuse me. Boo Osborne, Ballard trying to find Gordon, couldn't have quite put that alley-oop through the rim. Turnover comes back. Todd Brown ended up taking three and nothing there. Kind of interested to see how this game goes today. Uh, back on April 23rd, the Condors beat the Hustle 121 to 114. At that time, uh, the Hustle was 0 and 10. And um, they've won a couple games since then, but they've lost a couple. So let's just see if the, if the Hustle can possibly try to pull a win tonight. As I said, the hustle coming th into this game, three and 12, to last in last place right now in the Midwest Conference. And Juwan Hampton getting his first two buckets for the hustle, first a two on their last possession and finding a nice open three right there. Condors coming into this game, eight and seven. Uh, they just had a victory last night over the Dayton flight, 134, 131, as you talked about. Cody Ballard scoring 58 points. That is, to me, amazing to score 53 points. Because to score 53 points, you gotta get a lot of shots up as we see Hampton make that shot. But for Cody Ballard to score 58 points, he has to get a lot of shots up. And he may see what kind of gas he got left in the tank today you know it's almost like a back-to-back -back. and uh, we're gonna have a defensive three-second violation so Todd Brown will go to the line and shoot for the, the free throws I apologize uh, Hampton's second shot was actually a, a long two uh, but on that last possession he was able to knock down that three so uh, I believe after missing his first shot is able to knock down his next three and giving the hustle a seven to one lead after Todd Brown knocks down the technical free throw. Only two minutes into the game here, but a strong start for the hustle. Ball inbounded to Ballard, and we know Ballard with a nice looking fadeaway there. Likes to start his games on the inside and work his way out. Yes, he's one of those guys who can get you a bucket, as well as other players. You got Brett McKnight, who's going to come off the bench, obviously, today. Uh, he's an actual league scorer. He's averaging 24, just under 25 a game. Uh, but you got you got guys who can put the ball in the bucket. You got Blue Osborne. You got Ty Brown. Um, so looking to see what the Condors can do today in this game. Dwight Burton was able to knock down that three on that last possession for the hustle. Hampton able to save the ball from going out of bounds and the hustle coming back the other way. Hampton with a nice little step back. That one's just off the mark. Kellen Thomas kicks out to Cody Ballard. Saw Richie Gordon cutting, but I don't think Gordon was ready for that. And Detroit Hustle take advantage of that turnover, giving them now a 12 to three lead. Hampton's coming out on fire right now. He, you know, you can tell he's serious about this game right now. You know, in, in, in what way, you know, you want to get a win, but it'll be even better just to get that win on the road. Not for sure how the playoffs are playing out for um, 
the Midwest division, but I'm not for sure if everybody makes it or if a couple teams in the division makes it, but. For the playoffs, I believe yes. it is the uh, top four teams. Top four teams in each division? Yes. Okay. I, be I, I, I believe it is each division. A couple weeks ago, we were talking to Mr. Cody Ballard, and he had told, he, he had just mentioned top four teams make the playoffs, so I was assume I'm assuming he's talking about the uh, divisions. I believe there's five divisions in T in the uh, TBL league. Those last two fouls, uh, loose, loose ball fouls, were going to go on Clifton Burrell, and it looks like he's going to pick up his third foul with just in a matter of 30 seconds. Yeah, as you're going to, the coach is going to have to get, a, get him out and get him a little breather because three fouls early on in the first quarter, you're going to need somebody to come in and give him a little spell because he'll be fouled out before you know it if things keep going the way they're going. So that last one, he fouled Richie Gordon in the act of shooting, and Richie is going to the line for two, converting on his first one. Second one is up and good. I think what we're going to see out of the hustle is just playing for pride. Like, uh, obviously, they're probably pretty much out of the playoffs uh, for the season. So they're just going to play with a lot of pride. And it looks like right now they're playing with a whole bunch of pride. They're playing tough. They're playing defense. As we see Hampton go to the bucket and miss that shot. Ball being worked around. And that three is going to be knocked down by Dwight Burton. Yeah, and as, as you were saying, you know, at, at the bottom of the, uh, the standings, you know, they don't really have much to, to lose. Um, and it, they, they might be kind of playing as like as Cody Ballard finds Richie going down low. It, they might be kind of playing like the upset team. Like the Columbus Condors are, I, I believe, ranked fourth in the Midwest rankings right now. So who's to say that they won't spoil the Condors' chances of making the playoffs? Yeah, you got the Condors sitting at uh, eight and seven, and they're kind of sitting right there, you know. There's a couple other teams that's sitting right there in the standings with them. You got the Indy Express at 10 and six, and uh, the Owensboro Thoroughbreds at nine and seven. So there's kind of a log jam between three and five. So obviously the Condors will want to get a win to secure one of those four top playoff spots. Three was off the mark by Boo Osborne, got his own rebound. Cody Ballard upset with his team that he's the only one down there rebounding. Three taken by Jody Hill. That's off the mark. Richie Gordon with some impressive ball handling <laughs> skills. He went coast to coast on that one. Did, he, did, did he dribble between the guy's legs? Did it, I see that correctly? It, it looked like <laughs> it a little bit. One thing about the Condors is that everybody can handle the ball. Everybody can shoot the ball. So they're all kind of like interchangeable as we've seen Richie Jenkins bring that ball to court. Hampton trying to find a shot, guarding, guarded tightly by Ballard. And he ends up getting the friendly roll. Jawan Hampton has the hot hand right now. So far, 11 out of the 20 points for the Detroit Hustle. Cody Ballard going to pick up that foul. That'll be his first. And we see... Uh, Andy Bosley, Brett McKnight, and Courtney Pilgrim checking in for the Columbus Condors. Once again, you know, there's not a drop off. You bring these three guys in, you got Bosley averaging 14 points a game. You got Pilgrim coming off a 29 point game. And then you have your leading scorer in Brett McKnight who's averaging 25 points a game. So I think the coach knows what he's doing when he's bringing in this scoring off the bench for some more scoring. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see if uh, if this method works. 21 to nine lead, 6.30 remaining in the first. Brett McKnight with a kick out three. That one's no good. Loose ball ends up being picked up by the hustle. Hampton swings it over to Burton, who then finds Hill. Derry Garrett, who's checked in for uh, who checked in for Bur Burrell after he picked up his three fouls, knocks down a three. Nice shot by Garrett. You see Cody Ballard and Garrett getting a little physical down low. 
if you're the hustle, if you're the hustle, team le teammates, team leaders, coaches, I'm sure you're telling everybody on that court, Ballard is not going to score 58 points on us this evening. We don't care if he's tired or not tired. He's not going to score 50 points, 58 points on our watch. So Ballard there picks up his second foul. Burton not able to get that reverse layup to fall. Osborne up ahead to Ballard. Looked like maybe a little shove in the back, but we're not going to mention it. <laughs> this is, you know, a semi, two semi-pro basketball teams, and of course the physicality is, you know, it's just like you see in, 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 in the professionals. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. I mean, it's physical from, from top. Every time I come and, and do a game, every team, no matter what the record is, these guys are physical. They play physical. They play tough defense. And it's, it's always going to be a dog fight. Always look forward to it. And if you see right there, the, the Columbus Condors turned the ball over. The hustle started going the other way. And McKnight, Bosley, and Ballard, or uh, McKnight, Bosley, and Pilgrim, as Hampton hits another three, were still in the back end of the court just waiting for something to happen. Yeah, it looks like I, it was it was some miscommunication going on right there. Uh, but it looks like, you know, the Condors need to get in a little rhythm, uh, get some easy buckets going. As we see McKnight coming in, doing what he does normally and plays down low, uh, the Condors need to just get into their groove and do what they normally do, and that's put buckets uh, in the hole. Yep. Martell Warnham is going to be assessed his first foul and send McKnight to the line. Uh, just doesn't look like the energy is quite there for the Condors, but uh, you know it is. There is still 4:48 remaining in only the first quarter, so nothing to be worried about yet. As McKnight can't connect on the first, they're down 29 to 11 though. As Todd Brown checks in for Cody Ballard. It's getting chippy already. Like I said earlier, they're, 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 they're talking. Two Midwest teams, three hours away from each other. What more could you expect? And we see uh, Harley Bothwell making his first appearance in for the hustle. Going over and giving Jody Hill a break. Brett McKnight tries to knock down one of these free throws right here. Connect, he is able to on one of two. Brett McKnight, uh, as he's, I guess you could kind of say, famously known for talking to the crowd. Oh, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> he's not the only one, but I think he might be the number one. Bothwell, who just checked into the game, had Bosley tightly contesting him, but looked like he got an arm or his hand on his arm as he was going up for that shot. So Bosley will pick up his first foul and send Bothwell to the line for two. The hustles got out to a pretty fast start. I can't say that I've ever seen the Condors down this early, down this much this early in the game. What do they say? There's a first for everything. Hey, find a Jets pizza near you, ladies and gentlemen. Order online at jetspizza.com. Second free throw off the mark. DeAndre Davis checks in for the hustle. Brett McKnight using his size and strength to be able to get that offensive rebound and put that back up. You know, he's one of those guys, he's like a Zion Williamson when it comes back to rebounding the ball and getting it back right back up. He doesn't grab the rebound, take a bounce. He goes right back up with it. He's just, he's, he's so fast and quick with getting that rebound and getting those putbacks. Hampton takes a long three. That one's off the mark. McKnight may not be the tallest player, but he has to be one of the strongest players I've ever seen. For sure. He's one of those guys that can just get you in position and get that rebound and get that putback. Courtney Pilgrim, nice moves there, able to knock down the mid-range jumper. Getting his first basket of the game. 3.30 remaining here in the first. Hustle with a 30-16 lead now. 
you know, right before the game started, we were looking at the teams warming up. And we were thinking, you know, in my mind, I was thinking, well, the hustle doesn't have as many players out there, but both of these teams are playing with nine players today. Yeah, when uh, we seen them warming up as Pilgrim takes the floater and that one's off the mark, we only seen about four or five people out there for the hustle warming up, but now you look over on the bench and they've got four extra people to come in. Actually, three. I was looking at a play. I think he's the team manager. Uh, yes. The hustle has three. They have eight players towards the Condors nine. Derry Garrett will end up taking that long range three. That one's no good. DeAndre Davis with the offensive board can't get it to fall. McKnight with the contested defense quickly comes the other way to Brown, then finds Bosley in the corner and knocks down the three. Bosley's one of those outside three-point specials that comes in and knocks down threes when needed. He's also a high flyer as well. Cuts the deficit to 11 now, 30 to 19. Bothwell's three is off the mark. And after a slow start, the Condors are slowly starting to chip away at this lead. Brett McKnight can't quite get a hand on it as that last went out on him. And the Detroit Hustle will retain possession. Cody Ballard checking it back into the game, giving Boo Osborne a break. One thing about professional basketball is there's always going to be runs. Every team is going to get a run. Every team is going to, you know, have a, a, a run of where they don't make shots. So right now we were, I was just talking about how the Condors were down big, and they're only down by 11 right now. Official timeout, uh, shot clock malfunction as we have multiple of those every week. <laughs> I haven't been fortunate enough to see one of those in any of the games I've done so far this season. Well, oh, it's unique because usually, you know, the shot clocks are, are in sync or hooked up with the, with the scoreboard. And uh, you see the hustle who just, nope. He did not just check in. That was Warnham who got that offensive rebound. Uh, but this shot clock, is Garrett's threes off the mark. Hampton's there to get the board. That one's off. This shot clock is actually just controlled with a uh, the little digital clicker. So, you know, there there is bound to be some problems. But Todd Brown comes the other way and is able to knock down that three. Good shot by Todd Brown. When he sees one go in, he gets his confidence built up, and he's, he becomes a better player as the game goes on. Bothwell ends up taking a nice step back three. Beautiful move there by Bothwell to be able to get the tightly contested Pilgrim off of him. Yes, that separation is key. One thing about it is you have to get separation because everybody plays defense. So the main thing is if you can shoot the basketball, your main goal is to get separation to get that shot off. And Warnham got Pilgrim on the arm as he was going up for that shot. So Warnham will pick up his second foul, sending Pilgrim to the line for two. First one is up and good. Pilgrim coming off a 29-point game last night as well. Um, 29 points, five rebounds, and three assists. So you're looking at almost 80 points between Pilgrim and uh, Cody Ballard last night. And 80 out of how many did they score last night? 80 out of 135. So they scored pretty much more than half <laughs> of the points for the Condors. And we're going to get a, a loose ball. Brett McKnight and not happy with that call. Is looked like he might have given uh, Bothwell a little shove as the ball was in the air. So McKnight will pick up his first foul. And the ball will stay with the hustle. 12 seconds on the shot clock, Bothwell. I always wish I could hear some of these guys talk. I wish they could be mic'd up sometime during the games because <laughs> sometimes it's kind of hard to read lips. It is, especially from up here. Offensive rebound goes to the hustle, but Ballard there to quickly steal that one away. Bosley finds Pilgrim, and Pilgrim can't convert on the layup, but Bosley not giving up on the play. Good hustle there. Finds Todd Brown. Todd Brown will step out for the three. That one's off, and Cody Ballard just trying to do it all right now. 
Five seconds left. Pilgrim with the ball in the corner. He'll pull up for the three for the last shot. That one's no good. Bosley there for the tip in with .1 second left. And after one quarter of play, the Condors are down, but they had chipped away after a, a very slow start. The Detroit hustle up 33 to 26 after one quarter of play. We will go ahead and take a short break and be back for the second quarter. You're watching TBL basketball here on the Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera... Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Back here at the United Sports Center in Columbus, Ohio, where the first quarter have, has just finished up. The eight and seven Condors down right now to the three and 12 Detroit Hustle, 33 to 26. Seth Donahoe alongside Randall Smith. Randall, what did you make of that first quarter between both teams? Uh, the Condors got off to a little slow start. I've seen that before out of them. Uh, the Hustle got off to a fast start, which I was expecting. Um, but the Condors came back, fought back. They got a couple substitutions in there, settled down, and brought this game to um, less than 10 points. Ball goes out of bounds, last touched by the Hustle. 33 points in that first quarter for the Detroit Hustle. Jawan Hampton having 15 of them. Had the hot hand early. Yeah, he started out, he's one of those guys, he started out very hot. Um, I, you know, you don't expect it to cool off. You don't, that's not what you're thinking in your mind that he's going to cool off, but he kind of cooled off as, you know, as well as the Condor's defense has picked up. So we'll see. Brent McKnight able to convert on his first field goal of the quarter. Hill with Pilgrim on him trying to find something. Ends up giving it to a cutting Garrett. That one's off the mark. Garrett. Is a little upset he couldn't get that offensive rebound. A little upset that his teammates weren't around to help him. And quickly the other way, Courtney Pilgrim comes and docks down a three. Nice shot by Courtney Pilgrim. Pilgrim has on number 70, but he, he reminds me of a football player. That's a football player's number. He doesn't remind me of a lineman, more like a maybe a fullback or something he's like that. built like a running back, that is for <laughs> sure. Yeah, for sure. Him and Kellen Thomas, same, oh, yeah. not the same size, same built. Courtney Pilgrim with another three in the corner. That one just too strong. Gets his own offensive rebound. Todd Brown for three. That one's good. Todd Brown knocks down that three-point shot. You can always count on him to knock down some good buckets when you're not even necessarily thinking about him knocking down a bucket. He knocks down those buckets. And after that three, just like that, the Condors now have a 34 to 33 lead. You know, it's one of those things, and it's probably been like this the whole season for the Detroit Hustle because they actually, they have good players. They have athletes on their team. It's just sustaining the lead and, and keeping up with it and playing good defense. That air ball for the last possession for the Hustle is off the mark by Davis, so Condors come the other way. Bosley will end up taking that three, and he knocks that one down. Give him that, give him that, that open shot like that. You got to get a hand in a player like Bosley's face because he's going to take that shot. And most of the time, he's going to make it. And we really see the intensity picking up here for the Condors. Burton can't get that three to fall. Condors knocking down three three-pointers here in this second quarter. Todd Brown with a long two is able to get that one to fall. And 
My, how it seems like the tides have turned just all of a sudden. If you're the hustle coach, are you thinking timeout or are you thinking just let them play through? I, I, if I was the coach, I would have called a timeout when they first took the lead because that was, that would have been, uh, let me do my math here correctly. 34, 33. Seven, yeah, that would have been uh, seven unanswered points, eight unanswered points to start the quarter. And instead of 34-33, it is now 39-33. to And uh, I think that the hustle coach must have heard us talking about them because they do end up taking that timeout with 9-13 remaining in the second. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, find a Jets Pizza near you or order online at JetsPizza.com. Jets Pizza is better because it has to be. And like I said, Randall, I just want to touch on it again. It seems like the intensity for the Condors just picked up out of nowhere here at the start of this quarter. Picked up out of nowhere, and that's the thing with the Condors. You have shooters. You have, you know, looking over there at them right now, everybody they have over there can get a bucket. All their players can put the ball in the bucket, so you have to, you know, kind of have your head on the swivel. When you got guys coming out like Cody Ballard, you got guys coming out, uh, you got guys coming in like Brett McKnight. It's kind of like, wow, you, well, I thought I might get a little. No, you can't get a break when Cody Ballard comes out because in comes Brett McKnight, in comes Bosley, in comes Pilgrim. So, you know, if you're the hustle, <laughs> you got to suck it up and you got to keep playing and keep doing what you were doing in the beginning that got you that big lead, driving to the basket, playing good defense, playing in between the lanes. And it's funny when you look at this Condors team, it just seems like on any given night, any one of the Condors players can get you 30 points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say 20, but yeah, 20, 30 or better. It's like... I mean, I'm being generous. There, yeah, there's literally not one guy on this team who can't get you buckets. And they're also miss, they're missing McCormick. They're missing a couple players. McKnight ends up taking it to the hole against the smaller Bothwell and is able to convert. And uh, Brett McKnight is going to pick up a technical. Do you want to guess what that was about? I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it was some trash talking. Uh, you know, but, but I was going to say this right before you asked. Brett McKnight is one of those guys who's going to have that X on his back, you know. Yes. I'm sure the referees know. Uh, we're going to watch out for McKnight. Yep. Watch out for him. So, you know, he got to be careful, but that's, you know, that's the way he plays. And this is it, this is a very fairly small league, so the refs do rotate, so I'm sure that they see, you know, a different number of teams a different amount of times during the years. Oh, yeah. So, if they, once they do one game for the Condors and they see how McKnight acts, so... Like you said, that puts an X, Put on, an X bag on his back for, for the next time that they come around. So so he's going to get called for that tech. Even if it shouldn't have been called, it's McKnight. And that's what the, the refs, like I said, they're all, they already have it in their mind. I'm going to watch out for this guy. So he says one thing. If it's one of those refs that's having one of those days, he's going to get teed up. But as we do know, McKnight is one of those kinds of players who, you know, there's not a whole lot of people that can talk smack and back it up. Right. Brett McKnight is one of those few. He's definitely one of those guys who can talk it and back it up, but it's almost kind of like watching Dennis Rodman back in the day. It's like, <laughs> man, you got a technical already. You get one more, you throw him out. So, like, you got to kind of, <laughs> you got to know when to, to get him, I guess. Burrell could not get that one to fall. The other way come the Condors, and Cody Ballard knocks down a three. And let me see here. So that will be 18, an 18 and 0 run. And they get an 18 to 2 run now, as uh, that was Burrell. Burrell? Burrell? Burrell. Burrell. As he's able to get the uh, hustle's first two points of the quarter. As I said, uh, the Condor scoring 18 unanswered before that one right there. A beautiful find there by Pilgrim as he found a cutting boo Osborne. If you're the hustle, you just want to stop this bleed in any kind of way. I, I'm looking at that foul, you know, I, I was a, it was an angry foul, it was an upset foul on boo Osborne, but 
you if you're the hustler, you're going to have to find some kind of way to stop this bleeding going on because it's going to get that cut, that scab is going to get wider and wider if they don't patch up some things. That foul going against Harley Bothwell. That will be his first, sending Boo Osborne to the line for his first points of the game, potentially. First one <laughs> looked like it got all the way through the rim before that one circled out. But those are the risks of playing the game of basketball. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, they call this the charity strike. They call <laughs> it the freebies, but man, shooting free throws are not easy. <laughs> People make it seem so easy. Yes, you are up there. You're by yourself. There's, no, <laughs> there's nobody around you guarding you. And it sounds simple on paper. Free throw. But sometimes the two easy ones are some of the hardest ones to make. Exactly. 45-35 lead here for the Condors now. 7.30 remaining in the first half. Garrett trying to find something. Richie Gordon checks back in, and Garrett knocks down a nice three. And that's what you're going to want to see from Garrett and Hampton. You're going to want to see these guys come for the Condors and don't just let them have whatever they want down here on the offensive end. Kellen Thomas ends up taking the mid-range jumper, gets the friendly roll. Burton will end up taking that three. That one rims in and out. Ballard with the rebound. He'll come the other way. He'll get a screen by Gordon. He'll shoot the three, and Ballard will knock that one down. Didn't look like anybody, once he came up from under that screen, nobody kicked out to help with that defense. You can't leave a guy like Ballard open like that. And that traveling violation. Seems like everybody knew that one on the court the second it happened. Everybody looked at the ref like, <laughs> ref, when are you going to blow the whistle? 50 to 38 lead. Thomas will inbound to Ballard. Ballard setting up the offense. Who Osborne with the ball, thought about the baseline jumper, hands it off to Gordon. Gordon with the smaller hill on him. And after getting tied up, looks like Gordon might have taken a, a shot below the belt. As you could hear uh, Cody Ballard screaming at the offense and directing traffic. The point guards on the basketball team are really genuinely the quarterbacks, you know, of the, of, of the basketball team. They're same type players. Nice a three point there by Jody Hill. And it's always nice to have a guy like Cody Ballard because yeah, he, yeah, he, he does kind of bark orders as Ballard knocks down another three. But he, he does it because he expects the best out of his teammates, right. and he wants his team to be great. Right. Burton threw three defenders, and over the outstretched hand of Richie Gordon is able to get that layup to fall. Cody Ballard will take another three. That one rims in and out. Go quickly the other way. Richie Gordon just kind of lackadaisically getting back and. <laughs> It, it, he looked like he was talking to, uh, I, I couldn't see who that was over in the corner. It looked like Garrett. It, it looked like uh, the past couple possessions, Garrett and Richie Gordon have been having some words. I think Garrett was the one that got Richie Gordon on that low blow. And then uh, maybe as some revenge, Gordon got a... Uh, Looks like Garrett has been... defense there by... Garrett has been getting into a lot of the Condors players' heads here this first half. Cody Ballard there with the offensive rebound. Ballard with 11 points in the quarter. Hill will end up pulling up for three. That one's off the mark. Uh, but after Richie Gordon took that low blow, he set a screen on Garrett, and Garrett either might have sold it a little bit. I'm not sure, but it looked like Gordon might have got him in, in the back, and we can see him here going, kind of going at it right now. <laughs> Ref has to come in. Uh, no, 
Richie Gordon is kind of like Brett McKnight on terms of he's another one of those players that can talk the smack with you and back it up at the same time. <laughs> one thing about the Condors is, you know, they have a lot of players like that. Richie Jake is one of those guys. Cody Ball is one of those guys. Brett McKnight's one of those guys. You look at a guy like Boo Osborne, he's kind of even kill. He doesn't really talk. He doesn't really, you know, he doesn't say anything. He just goes out there and play. I think you kind of need a little bit of both of that on your team. The timeout called here, 429 remaining in the first half. Condors having a 57 to 45 lead. I want to go back and, and touch on Cody Ballard. He started off this game kind of slow, obviously having the 58 points that we're not going to harp on too much last night. Um, but has 15 points in this game so far, 11 in this quarter. And as we said, you know, he, 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 he can be kind of demanding of his teammates, but he wants to be great. He, he wants his team to be great. Yeah, and, and that's one thing I always wondered about Cody was how does the players respond to him? And they seem to respond to him pretty well. Um, you know, these guys are all grown men. So at the end of the day, it's kind of like I'm, I'm doing this for your best interest. So mm -hmm. don't take it in a way. But, you know, he, Cody Ball is one of those bulldogs out there. They all, want, they all want the same objective, to be able to make it to the playoffs and, you know, make a run. Hampton, nice block there by Gordon. Burton ends up kicking it out to Gareth and gives it back to Burton. Thought about the three, no good. Richie Gordon tried to play soccer there for a second. And that three is knocked down by Hampton after scoring 15 in the first quarter. With four minutes remaining, he finally gets his first bucket of the second quarter. Kellen Thomas kicks out to Ballard. Ballard, heat check, and it's still on fire. Ballard with his 4-3 in the quarter. It's very amazing to see him out there still doing it at this age that he's doing it at. Make it sound like he's like 50 years old. <laughs> yeah, I thought about that after <laughs> I said it. Like, I, I'm assume, I, I would like to think Cody's in early to mid-30s. Kenny Cancel checking in. Can't quite get a handle on that. Burton the other way will pull up for three and gets that one to fall. Cutting the lead to within single digits now. 3-15 left in the second. 62-51 lead for the Condors. Cody Ballard thought about the three. Got Garrett up in the air. Finds Boo Osborne on the other side. Boo Osborne with nothing but net. That was a beautiful shot by Osborne. Good find by Ballard. Usually when Boo Osborne gets going, it's good for the Condors. And he, he's one of those guys that you want, you know, you want to get going. Because he's he's always going to be, like I said, that even kill guy who's going to come out there and give you 100% every game. Just got just to gotta find him with all the scores. And uh, down the other end, Jody Hill was able to get by Boo Osborne, and Osborne fouled him. Hill was able to convert, so he will go to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Just under three to go. 10 point lead for the Condors. Hill at the line shooting one. And converts. Hill with eight points in the quarter for the hustle. Osborne finds Gordon, but Warnham right there with the, uh, with the steal from behind, Burton. Trying to create space, he does. He'll take the step back three. Got halfway down before falling out. Hampton tried to grab the offensive rebound and could not. That shot looked real good going down. I'll tell you what, from what I've seen so far in this first half, Burton and uh, Bothwell and Hill do a good job of, of creating space and getting their own shots. Oh, yeah. If only you could get them to some of those shots to fall. And, and some of them have been falling, but they definitely know how to create space. Bothwell can't get that one to fall. Thomas with the rebound, gets it up ahead to Boo. Boo finds Council in the corner. Council will take it all the way. Kenny Council is on and down in the score books. And with that, everybody for the Condors has scored in this game, Randall. It is only the first half, but Definitely it's not something half. that does happen often. Right, and, and like I said, you know, they're just, they're those, there's one of those teams that they share the ball. 
um, and they have scores. So when you're when you have that kind of recipe, you're going to see guys get into the scoring box, the box scores, I should say. You see DeAndre Davis checking back in for the hustle, 65-54. Bothwell takes it to Kellen Thomas, and Thomas is going to end up picking up that foul, a blocking foul, the official says. If you, if you, you know, if I'm the hustle right now, if I'm the hustle's coach, I'm the hustle's captains, I kind of want to get some uh, points going into this second, going into the second half, leading into halftime. Um, the Condors look like they look a little comfortable with the lead that they have. So um, as Bothwell just knocked down his uh, first free throw, Get, get after it, play defense, go into the second half and try to be down by less than 10 points. Uh, the Hustle had a seven point lead after one quarter. Um, they have put up 22 points in the second, but the Condors have put up, I haven't done my math yet, but about 40 points here in the second, 39 to be exact. Boo Osborne will take the long three just short. Bothwell with the board, quickly pushes the other way, finds a cutting DeAndre Davis. Boo Osborne reaches in and will make DeAndre Davis go to the line and earn them. That'll be Boo Osborne's second foul of the game. Yeah, not bad. I, th I thought maybe they could have slowed down the offense a little bit, but he did get a foul out of it, so he's going to go to the charity strike and try to knock down two free throws. First one, can't fall. Second one does, however, fall. Just over a minute left to play. Boo Osborne ends up taking it all the way to the basket, using his strength to be able to finish. But the hustle quickly coming the other way before I could even knew it. Garrett's down on the other end shooting a three. Didn't need to rush that shot. I mean, you could have got a better shot if you were to hustle. Council can't get that three to fall. 45 seconds remaining. Looks like they might try for a possible two-for-one opportunity. Bothwell on his possession. Ten seconds on the shot clock, trying to create space. Good defense there by Council. Finds Garrett down low on the block, and Garrett with a nice layup. Good take by Garrett. Twenty-three, twenty seconds now remaining. Boo Osborne finding Todd Brown in the corner. Brown cuts baseline, can't find anything. Garrett up ahead to Hampton. Hampton with McKnight on his back and is able to finish that one. And there were those points going into the half you were talking about, Randall. Yeah, that two for one worked. I think um, that first one wasn't a good, good shot selection, but they still had a lot of time on the shot clock. So. Todd Brown. Ends up driving baseline and will get fouled by. Is that number eight, I believe? Yes, DeAndre Andre Davis. Davis. His first of the game and fouled with .8 seconds left. Tom Brown going to the line for two. Gets the first one to fall. I think if you were to hustle, I don't think you wanted to create that foul right there, but you know, going into this second half, the Detroit Hustle did make two good shots leading up to halftime. Second one is up and good. Tried to get a shot off with .8 seconds left, but couldn't get it to fall. So here, after one half, the Condors, after starting off slow, now have a 69 to 60 lead over the Detroit Hustle. And Randall, the, the Condors started out that second quarter on an 18-0 run, uh, got, got that lead that we had mentioned, 39-33, before the hustle called the timeout. And, you know, after, after starting off slow in the second quarter, the uh, hustle have now brought it down to within single digits. 
Yeah, uh, at first, you know, the start of the second quarter, it was like the tail of two quarters because the hustle came out kind of flat in the second second quarter, just like the Condors did in the start of the first quarter. And the Condors, you know, the hustle don't have as many shooters as the Condors have. And when the Condors are down here and they're going to roll and they're making shots and they're playing defense, it's tough to stop that team. So um, the hustle stopped a little bit of the bleeding going into the second half, and we should see what goes on this second half coming up. As I had said, the Condors have a 69 to 60 lead here against the Detroit C Hustle in Columbus, Ohio. We're at the United Sports Center. I'm Seth Donahoe alongside Randall Smith. We will go ahead and take a break, but when we come back, we will have the second half ready to go for you guys. You're watching TBL Basketball here on the Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. 
Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. The United Sports Center in Columbus, Ohio where the Columbus Condors have a 69 to 60 lead over the Detroit Hustle. Seth Donahoe alongside Randall Smith. Randall, as we had mentioned before we went through the break, uh, the tale of two quarters uh, is what it seemed like.
and gets that one to fall. If the, if the to coming back and trying to win this game, you're going to have to see a lot of Garrett. You're going to have to see a lot of Hampton, and you're going to have to see a lot of Bothwell. Turnover there by the Condors. Bothwell kicks it out to Hampton. Hampton will take the three. That three is off the mark. Courtney Pilgrim dishes down low to Richie Gordon. Richie Gordon gets things started for the Condors for the, in the second half. Richie Gordon is one of those guys who can control the paint and he can shoot the basketball. So you're going to get a lot from him. Bothwell able to put on the handles and get by Gordon. Wasn't able to finish, though. Shot clock resets to 14, now down to nine. Garrett will end up taking that three. That one's off the mark. And no one for the Condors around to, uh, to rebound as Garrett got his own rebound from outside the three-point line. Todd Brown ends up taking the three and knocks that one down for the Condors. Once again, that's another one of those scores for the Condors that you forget about sometimes, Todd Brown. Because he's not your, probably he's not your one, two, or three options on the, for the Condors. Well, he now has 14 points for the Condors, and we have a foul here on Boo Osborne. That'll be his third first of the first team foul of the half. Here inbounds it to Hampton. Hampton having the hot hand for the hustle, having 20 points in that first half. Finds Hill, Hill will take the step back three. That one's just short. Osborne with the board. Quickly pushes the other way, but realizes he didn't have the number, so he pulls it out. Pilgrim will end up pulling up for three and gets that one to fall. Courtney Pilgrim, another one of those guys that is confident in his game, and when he gets shots to fall, the more confident he becomes. Yeah, he looked like he wanted to set the offense up, and he said, ah, forget it. I'm just going to take this three-point shot, and it was nothing but net. Todd Brown deflected that pass. Good hustle there by Pilgrim to try and save it, but couldn't quite get it back into play. The hustle will retain possession with... 12 seconds on the shot clock. For the hustle, you want to take good shots and tighten up that defense. Bothwell taking a long two, is able to get that one to fall. Bothwell is, uh, is a crafty guard. He has really good ball handling skills, as we'd mentioned in the first half. He's really good at creating shots for himself, and we kind of seen it right there where he has good ball handling skills that you have to respect him being able to drive by you. He was one of those guys I, I remember from the last game that, you know, I didn't remember him from scoring a whole bunch of points, but he was definitely a factor for the Detroit Hustle. Hill can't get that baseline jumper to fall. Pilgrim the other way will pull up for three, gets that one to fall. Two threes for Pilgrim here in this third quarter. Gives him 13 points for the Condors on the game. If I'm not mistaken, I think Pilgrim played for the Scarlet and Gray or Carmen's crew on the TBT. Did he? I'm almost sure he did. Well, with a pull-up shot like that just past the logo, I wouldn't doubt it. Courtney Pilgrim knocking down another three and giving the Condors an 85 to 66 lead. And the hustle call timeout with 8.28 remaining in the third. And we kind of see it here in the second quarter, or as we did in the second quarter here in the third, that, uh, you know, the Condors having 69 at the half now have 85. Uh, that's six, 16 points. Math wasn't my strong suit, but 16 to six outscoring the hustle so far in this third. Yeah, um, you know, I, there's nothing I could really actually say, but hustle, you have to hustle, you have to play defense, you have to stop these guys because they're outside shooters as well as driving to the basket scores. And what they're doing right now is just trying to shoot the lights out. You, you know, they have a plethora of scores, like I've been saying. You can't let a guy like Pilgrim open, you can't leave him open. 
You know, you think you think you think Bosley's the only three-point shooter on the team. You think Ballard's the only three-point shooter, and then you got a guy like Pilgrim come in and he can shoot threes. And they've been leaving him open right here, so he's going to knock down those threes if you leave him open. And as I had mentioned, he's one of those guys like that Todd Brown. Once he sees a couple shots go in, his confident boost through the roof and coming out hot here to start this third quarter. Courtney Pilgrim having nine of the uh, team's 16 points. I wish we had one of those producers who could tell us uh, if Pilgrim played for the TBT a couple years ago. I'm sure <laughs> if we bring it up to our broadcast crew here, somebody <laughs> might not be doing something to where they could uh, they could take the time. Looks Check like, we, it looks like we had somebody Looks like we have our producer doing that now. We will let you guys know. So out of the timeout, Condor's 85-66 lead and Pilgrim all over Bothwell. And that's an interesting matchup. Courtney Pilgrim, a, a quick guard physical player against a, a crafty Bothwell. That's an interesting matchup uh, for, to see as the game goes on. Ball kicked back out to Boo Osborne. Boo Osborne with the three, and it is raining threes here in Columbus in this third quarter. Boo Osborne knocking down that one. I think what it, you know, they came out and said, let's get some outside shots. Let's take some three. They're, they're not really playing us tight on, on that three-point line, so let's take them. Five threes compared to the two twos being made so far for the Condors in this third quarter. Garrett. Finds a Hill on the baseline. Hill is able to get that one to fall. Speaking of the TBT, have you heard any word of uh, Aaron Kraft playing this summer? I have heard of Aaron Kraft playing this summer. Pilgrim with his toe barely on the line will make that two. Carmen's crew is uh, trying to make a run. It, it did. They win it last year, or am I mistaken? They won it two years ago. Two years ago. Cody Ballard knocks down the three, and he was he was calling timeout. I'm not sure if he wanted to call a timeout for the hustle or or or, or, or what that was about. And Garrett will end up pulling up for three. That one's just short. And man, after starting hot in the first quarter, you hustle just can't seem to find anything to fall right now. Can't find anything to fall, and the Condors, everything's falling. As we see, Bowler missed that shot, but everything is just falling for them. And this is typical Condors basketball for me. I, this is what I see all the time out of these guys. Garrett A would have knocked down that corner three, and another timeout is called. We see Garrett and looks like Richie Gordon kind of having some words again. The ref right there beside one of them to uh, make sure that nothing ensues. And uh, we see uh, the Columbus Condors going over here to the corner as uh, A.J. Davis is down here in the corner. Uh, about a month ago, A.J. Davis being in a terrible accident. Uh, I believe his first appearance uh, here since he has been out of the hospital. Um, you know, our thoughts and prayers continue to go out to him, his family, his friends, and, you know, anything that we can do to support him. And uh, it's good to see the team right there go over and, and say hello to their team. And nice to see A.J. Davis out and about now. Yeah, good good, good to see him. He, he looks like he's in good spirit. I think they kind of took a time out for A.J. Davis to come over there and see. Just, just, just good to see him come to a game and yeah. still, you know, be in good spirits. No, we just had that graphic up there AJ Davis does have uh, they have a GoFundMe support page for him to help pay for uh, medical bills a uh, new way of living and uh, you know any donation one penny to ten dollars whatever will be very beneficial and much appreciated definitely out of the timeout and we have a uh, Another shot clock malfunction. Ball inbounded now to McKnight. Nice little hesitation there to be able to get by Warnham. And if you're the hustle, what 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 do you do? I mean, 
are you looking at it like this is this was the Condor's run? Let's stop it and go on our run, or do you just pack it up and mail it in? Well, uh, these guys are uh, semi-pro players, and they are competitors, and they never want to just walk away from a game. I mean, there is six minutes remaining here in the third, and Condors are up now 94-71 to 71 after McKnight knocks down that free throw. Um, but anything can happen, you know, and th that's just the way the game goes. It, it, they say basketball is a game of runs, and we've seen – you know, the Condors start off slow, and then these past two quarters, they've gotten on those runs that they so talk about. Most definitely. Those runs can be a killer. McKnight converts on one of the two. Six minutes remaining halfway here through the third quarter, 94-71. Nice find there by Hill to, uh, that's Burrell down low in the paint. Todd Brown trying to set things up. Bothwell guarding him. Now Hill is on him. Then Brown takes it all the way to the hole. Andy Bosley almost came in and had a fantastic finish. Hampton quickly the other way for the hustle. Gets it over to uh, Burrell and some, looks like a little bit of a contact there by McKnight. Might have got Burrell in the face. Cuts up a little gingerly, but uh. Looks like they need to come down there and wipe the floor a little bit. So uh, McKnight will pick up that foul. That'll be his second. Oh no, not a foul, a jump ball. Looks like a jump ball, uh, excuse me, I, mis I was mistaken. Some unincidental contact. Bothwell kicks over to Garrett, Garrett, then back to Bothwell. Bothwell will take that three. That one's just short. Good active hands there by Burrell as Garrett ends up getting that three to fall. Good shot by Garrett. Garrett has 10 points in this third quarter for the hustle. 10 of the team, 16 in the corner. Bosley ends up taking that mid-range jumper. Good looking shot there by Bosley. He's able to get that mid-range jumper to fall. Bosley, he's another one of those guys who comes off the bench and can knock down a bucket. Garrett gets the ball in the corner, being tightly guarded by Todd Brown, then ends up getting by him, and Garrett adding to his strong third quarter performance. Pilgrim quickly comes the other way for the Condors. He ends up losing that. Burrell gets the loose ball up ahead to Bothwell. Bothwell over to Hill. Hill gets by and nice little finger roll there by Hill. And the game of runs, Randall, as we were talking about. Pilgrim the other way for the Condors. Takes a three and talking about guys who's having a strong third quarter performance. Pilgrim is one of those. Pilgrim has one, been one of those guys off the bench who's been left wide open. I don't know if they did a scouting report on him or not as we see the ball get jammed in the rim, but he's been left open every single shot, wide open three-point shots. Uh, four of those threes and a, a two having 14 points here in the quarter, Courtney Pilgrim does. And with four minutes remaining, Columbus Condors have a 99 to 80 lead. Bosley and Burrell set to a jump. Looks like we're gonna have Kellen Thomas checking in for Pilgrim and DeAndre Davis checking in for Jawan Hampton. Last touch by the hustle. Just under four to play. 99-80 lead for the Condors. Cody Ballard gets it down to McKnight. McKnight with a nice spin move. Can't get it to fall and Burrell will pick up that foul. That'll be Burrell's fourth. And 
they just put a plus one up on the scoreboard for the Condor saying it's 100 to 80. I'm not sure if that was by accident or if we missed something somewhere. Uh, well, like you said, it was 99 and they changed it. I don't know if there was some talk over there on the scoring sideline to see where that extra point came from. Uh, when, uh, when I do my math here in the scorebook, uh, at the end of the quarter, I will try to see if this is accurate or not. McKnight gets his first one to fall. Second one is up and good, giving them now a 102 to 80 lead. Hill will end up pulling up for that three. Hill gets that three to fall. Nice shot there. But Hill trying to find some kind of spark to ignite this offense. As you see, it doesn't look like the hustle has given up yet. They're still playing. Down low to McKnight. McKnight making a, trying to make a move against Garrett. Ends up taking a fadeaway. And McKnight, honestly, is with his size, he is very crafty with his footwork. He's definitely crafty with his footwork. And, and it's just, he's a low down there. I mean, he's been a mismatch for every game I've been to down low. He doesn't, he's not the tallest player on the Condors. He's never the tallest player on the court. But he's just one of those guys who he has excellent footwork and he knows how to put the ball in the bucket and he's, just, he's a low down there. DeAndre Davis goes to the line for two, gets his first one to fall and we just got word from our producer. We think that we, that the player's name for that Carmen's crew was Courtney Pygram which may be Courtney Pilgrim changed his name to Pilgrim when he came to the to the TBL, who knows? I'm not for sure. I think <laughs> if, you're, if you're saying Pygram, is it P-E-E? -E? That's the same as, that's the same as, I, I almost, I'm almost positive this is the same guy. <laughs> I could be wrong, but. Tom, or Kenny Council was not able to get that one to fall. The hustle quickly come the other way and Davis couldn't get that one. Bosley to Brown, then to back to Bosley. To Thomas, then back to Brown, then to Bosley. Bosley ended up just taking back, stepping back, taking the three, and he'll get that three to fall. And a lot of good ball movement there by the Condors. They do it so effortlessly. It's like <laughs> they're, 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 never, they're never in a rush. They're never in, in a situation where it's like they're, they're scrambling for points. It's like Bosley just steps back, makes that three-point shot comes off the bench, scores, Todd Brown, I mean, McKnight. They just have so many scores. I know I keep saying it, but as you can, if you're sitting here watching right now, you're seeing it. They're scoring from all over the place. Todd Brown ends up picking up that foul. Looks like he might have got uh, Jody Hill on the arm as he was uh, taking that three-point attempt. So Hill will go to the line for three. Gets his first one to fall. Hill having eight points in the quarter so far for the hustle. Second one is up and good. Looks like we see Bothwell or uh, Dwight Burton checking back in for the hustle, giving Garrett a rest. And uh, Jody Hill goes three for three from the line. 107-88 lead now for the Condors. 220 in the third. Bosley over to Brown. Then the skip pass to Thomas. Thomas will take that three. Gets that one to fall. And I'll tell you what, Randall. The Condors must think this rim is like three rims because they're seeing it well and they're getting everything to fall. Yeah, they're knocking down everything. Looking real, looking like the Golden State Warriors of old out there today. Nice flush there by Burrell. 110-90. Now Kenny Council then kicks it out to Brett McKnight. McKnight went up driving, gets the floater, can't get it to fall. Hustle quickly the other way, Hill. Kicks it out to Burton. Burton with a little hesitation. Shoots the three, that one's off. 
Bosley and the Condors will bring it up slowly to set it up. The 120 remaining. Bosley ends up taking that three. That one got about halfway down before coming out. Yeah, it looked good for a second. Davis will take the free throw line jumper. Just strong. Bosley will just take it all the way himself and he'll get fouled by Burrell and that'll be Burrell's fifth foul. Good take by Bosley. Bosley's one of those guys who I don't think he started out the beginning of the season with the Condors. You're right. But he's been a great addition for the Condors. Coming off that bench, scoring points like he does. I mean, he's a bucket. He has size. He has strength. He's a high flyer. He can shoot the ball. I mean, he's a great player. Yeah, Bosley was with the team last season okay. uh, before they did get shut down with COVID and everything. Uh, but you are correct, to start the season, he was not on the roster. Uh, I believe he, he did join the team after the unfortunate injury to A.J. Davis. But he is, he is familiar with the team as he's able to convert on the and one and a great addition. And that's, and that's another thing is he's, he played with these guys last year, so he knows the team. Bothwell with a nice pull up three. 113 to 93, under a minute now remaining in the third, 50 seconds to be exact. We're gonna get a blocking foul. That one will go on Burton. That'll be his first. And are they in the penalty? Or are they in the bonus? It looks like they are, yes. So Burton will pick up his first foul, team's fifth, sending Todd Brown to the line for two. First one, excuse me, first one is up and good. And, and, that, and that we just spoke on that a few seconds ago. I had a chance to talk to Brett McKnight and Boo Osborne earlier in the season. They told me a lot of these guys, they play together. They, they've been playing on a couple teams together for a few years. And that's one thing we just don't know about these teams that come in is how long have these, these guys been playing together? And the continuity that the Condors have, it just might come from the fact that not only that they're, they're good shooters and good players, but they've been playing together for a while. And uh, as we as we look at the roster from the uh, the Detroit Hustle, a lot of them being from nice block there by Brown. A lot of them being from the Detroit Detroit area, um, or if not Detroit, then at least all from Michigan. So you figure they all have had they to been maybe, playing for maybe. some time. Maybe. McKnight gets that one to fall, but then Jody Hill quickly comes the other way. Six seconds remaining. Ball turned over. Dwight Burton pick it up, take it. Looks like he tried to put Bosley on a poster. He tried, but it looks like Bosley said, I'm not having it. You can get the L one. She ain't gonna put me on the poster today. No, we seen as Burton walked by that Bosley had grabbed his arm as if he wanted him to help him up. Uh, <laughs> You know, maybe one another one of those kind of trash talking things. I'm not sure, but I won't lie. That is the first time I have seen that. As I was going to say, I think that's like a basketball code. Like you can't you can't help the other team up. We're gonna get a technical, and I I believe that's on on the shooter. I believe that's on Burton, who's gonna pick up that technical. It is. Interesting. I've not seen Burton was able to convert and go to the line for a chance for an and one, and the shooter ended up getting a technical. Once again, I cannot lie. I don't think I've seen that either. I'm, I'm actually not sure what's going on right now. I don't know <laughs> who's, I don't know who's arguing with who. I thought it was two hustle players arguing, to be honest, with each other, but. He said, I don't even sure. know what's going on right now. <laughs> I don't think if two hustle players are arguing, they'll let Todd Brown come down and shoot free throws, but <laughs> never know. Well, whatever the case is, Burton will go to the line and does convert for his three-point play. 
So inbound it counts will take the half court shot. That one just a little strong. And after three quarters of play, the Condors are up on top of the Detroit Hustle, 118 to 100. We will go ahead and take a short break. And when we come back, we will have the fourth quarter for you guys. For you guys. This is TBL Basketball here on the Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614 623-9675. Heading into the fourth quarter now have a 118 to 100, 118 to 100 lead. Seth Donahoe alongside Randall Smith and Randall. The ending to that quarter was a little weird, um, but as we'd seen, it looks like, as we had mentioned, the Condors are seeing the ball go through the basket really well right now. The Condors are just shooting the lights out this half. I'm interested to see what their per shooting percentage is for that for that third quarter because they just didn't miss as we see Pegram take Pilgrim a three point shot right now. Knocking another three down. During that break we had our producer come over and talk to us uh, kind of confirming that this is Courtney Pilgrim on the Condors team and there was a Courtney Pegram that played on that Carmen's crew team um, but our friend Randall Smith here seems to believe that they are the same person somehow. <laughs> we got to check with <laughs> I'm going to check Adam for that and see uh, wh who's who. Is this Pegram or Pilgrim? Or are they the same guy? I'm not for sure. Davis up ahead to Bothwell. Bothwell over to Burton. Burton got a little contact. I'm sure he's not real happy with that one. Not being called Ballard with Davis against him. We see Ballard getting back down into the paint. Ball ends up in Boo Osborne's hand. That three was right on line, just a little strong. Boo Osborne's another one of those guys who gets hot. And when he gets hot, he gets going. Basket there by. Uh, DeAndre Davis. Sorry, I'm looking at the stat book here, trying to put points together to see see what's going on. Richie Gordon the other way was not happy that there was not a foul called. He's still talking with the ref, and Richie has to be careful. He does not have a technical. Brett McKnight does. Bothwell sizing up Bosley. Takes it to him, and great defense there by Bosley. The, the length of Bosley able to cause, be able to block that ball. Really very effective. Cody Ballard comes the other way. He'll end up pulling up for three. Nice D there by Warnham. Looks like he wasn't going to step out in time, but Richie Gordon ends up with the ball in his hands, and he'll knock down the 15-footer. For a guy Richie Gordon's size, which I think he's about 6'9", 6 6'10", he moves pretty well. He moves real well, actually. And he shoots the ball pretty well as well. Nice take there by Hill. Just couldn't quite get it to fall. Right. 
Cody Ballard can't get that layup to fall. Bosley tried to tip it in. If, if you're the hustle, you know, the way you let Cody Ballard come in and take that layup like that, that was unacceptable. If I'm the hustle's coach, I would think about subbing a couple of those guys in or out maybe because that was just an unacceptable defense. And this game's not over with yet. Ballard is going to pick up a technical because he's not happy that the foul didn't get called. He definitely thought that there was a who was guarding him. I believe that was Hill that was guarding him. Cody Ballard seemed to thought that he reached in and the second he started talking, the ref knew that a technical was going to come and Hill will go to the line, shoot the technical, and convert. 8.38 remaining here in the fourth. 123-107 lead for the Condors. People. One of those moments where you just wish these players were, some of these players were mic'd up so you can just kind of hear what they're saying. And uh, I, I, did, I did some math. Oh, Warnham can't get that tip in the fall. I did some math. And after the third quarter and the second quarter as Burton knocks down the baseline jumper, second quarter, Condors scored 43 points in the third quarter. The Condors put up 48. So back to back 40 point outings, 40 point quarters uh, for the Condors. And, and that's Bothwell almost. not happy with that one, uh, but it looked like there was a lot of contact on that one. Definitely a lot of contact. So I could hear it from up here. It was definitely contact. Cody Ballard, uh, I think, <laughs> I'll say it again, another one of those guys that's confident in his game that when he talks the talk that he can back it up. For sure. And when I say I wish I had a mic on the, I'm talking about Cody. I'm talking about, <laughs> I wish there was a mic on Cody Ballard because I want to hear everything he's saying. Can't get the second one to fall. And, uh, one twenty four, one ten lead now. Lead only down to fourteen. We see Richie Gordon and Derry Garrett still going at it. As you can hear the crowd going back and forth down there. I hear somebody in the crowd like um, did was that a double technical? Garrett was upset saying, I didn't say anything. I think, I think he might have because no one is shooting technicals, technical free throws. Bothwell, after that, can't get the three to fall, but Hill is there for the offensive board. <laughs> going back to what you said at the end of that third quarter, you're right, Randall. There's just some stuff going on in, in the past five, six, seven minutes of this game that we just don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's like it's pure entertainment. You kind of get caught up in trying to listen to what they're saying as well as commentate the game. And, you know, we're students at this, but at the same time, it's, it's we, entertaining. You we we, we, we want to try and get you guys all the information <laughs> that we can. McKnight was able to knock down that turnaround jumper and turnover for on the hustle will give the ball back to uh, the Columbus Condors with 724 remaining, 126, 112. And now we see uh, Ballard and Bothwell starting to go at it now. He'll kick it out to McKnight. McKnight rattles that one in and out. And there's a, a, a lot of chippiness here, especially in the second half. I don't want to say there's any bad blood between the one of these two teams or any one specific player, but if I remember correctly, last game, uh, Ballard and Bothwell were kind of having words towards the end of the game as well. So 
as this quarter winds down and this game gets a little closer for the hustle, I'm expecting to see a lot of trash talk going on. Foul will go against. They say Bothwell, I do believe so. That'll be his third foul. I think we see now that Ballard is kind of getting into Bothwell's head or trying to as he converts the and one and is trying to take advantage of that. Oh, yeah. It, it, and that's what it's been this whole game. It's like a chess match of who can get into whose head more. Hill being guarded by Boo Osborne. Trying to get by him, but good defense. Gets it to Warnham, then kicks out to Garrett. Garrett with the three, that one's off the mark. Todd Brown with the board, Osborne brings it up for the Condors. Finds Todd Brown on the opposite wing. Brown will shoot the three and knocks that one down. Todd Brown having himself a solid game. Has 20 points right now for this Condors team and a timeout is called with 6.17 remaining in the game. 132-112 lead for the Condors. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, find a Jets pizza near you or order online at jetspizza.com. Jets pizza better because it has to be. Once again, Seth Donahoe alongside Randall Smith and Randall, uh, the, the first quarter, the Condors really came out slow. It, 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 it looked like that they played a game yesterday, which they did. But then these past three quarters have just, it's not anything what you expected. Yeah, it's, it's one of those games, excuse me, where I noticed this from the Condors. They start out pretty slow, and you know, they're always coming off a, a game the night before, a game a couple games before and they start off kind of sluggish, and it's kind of like who's going to get going first. And then as the game progresses and progresses, you just see the talent of the Condors overtake these other teams. And that's not to discredit the Detroit Hustle, because the Detroit Hustle has players of their own that can score and put the ball in the bucket. But when you're watching the Condors play, and you're and you keep it, you're a team and you're watching Cody Ballard and you're watching Brett McKnight and you're keeping your eye on Richie Jenkins, you forget about a guy a guy by the name of Todd Brown who can come in and knock down buckets as well. And and like you said, Todd Brown has has a quiet twenty points right now. So it's just one of those situations where you have to keep your head on the swivel when you're playing the Columbus Condors. Once again, like I said, their record does not equate to what I think their talent level is. Detroit Hustle with the ball out of the timeout. Bothwell will end up taking that three. That one's just short. Ball coming the other way. Ballard can't get the layup to fall, but Gordon's there for the rebound. He'll kick it out to Boo Osborne. Osborne with a three, gets that one to fall, and it looked like uh, Richie could have had the easy two points there. Yeah, it looked like he did. I almost felt like Ballard was kind of throwing him the, the off the back uh, off the backboard mm -hmm. pass, and I just don't know if Richie Jenkins was ready for it. So that foul will go against Cody Ballard, who will pick up his third. 135, 112. I, 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 all I have is the point totals, but you're right. I would love to see their three-point percentage, the Condors, for this game because it seems like they've just been making everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, I don't want to put the wrong number on it, but it looks like pretty much everything they've been shooting has been going down. Shot clock violation. Good defense there. By the Condors able to cause that turnover. And quickly up ahead, Brett McKnight couldn't get the layup to fall. Derry Garrett will bring it the other way. He'll kick it to the corner to Burton. Burton will take the three. That one's just off. I'm sorry, that was not Burton. That one was Burrell. Five minutes remaining, 135-112. Osborne gets it down low to McKnight. McKnight makes double team, kick it out for the three. That three's off the mark by Osborne. McKnight with the offensive board. And he'll get fouled by 
Number five, that is Clifton Burrell, and that'll be his sixth foul. At least I believe, at least I believe that was on Burrell. That could have been very well on uh, Bothwell. If that's the case, that is Bothwell's fourth. But McKnight will go to the line for two. First one is just strong. Todd Brown and Cody Ballard checking out. Kenny Council, Kellen Thomas checking in. Second one for McKnight is up and good. Hustle the other way, Hampton. I'll tell you what, Hampton was hot in the first quarter, and since then it looks like he hasn't been really trying to look for a shot. Yeah, he started out real fast, and you know he was doing everything you would think he would do to, to keep this team going with a couple players being out, but second half just haven't really hurt a bunch of buddy. Garrett shoots a three, and that one's off, but he got his offensive rebound, Burton. Frustrated that that three wouldn't fall. And quickly the other way. Come the Condors, Richie Gordon finds Kenny Council getting Council involved. Burton, not sure if he lost that or McKnight poked that one out. Nonetheless, Thomas comes the other way and shoots a three, that one's off. Gordon will kick it back out to him. And this <laughs> I, I love this announcer that's here for the Condors. He's uh, he's, he's very entertaining and uh, oh yeah, not not your not your typical average announcer, um, but nonetheless the timeout is called with 3:59 remaining. Condors have a 141-112 lead. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're enjoying this broadcast and would like to see how it's done and frankly do the things that we do here, like uh, broadcast these games. Be sure to check out the Ohio Media School. You can go online at beonair.com slash Columbus or call the school at 614-655-5250. Yes, um, that announcer you're talking about is Boo Osborne dad, Coach Roosevelt Osborne. He was the ex-coach at uh, Centennial High School. I think That's he just a retired. He was over there for like 15, 20 years, so... Well, Congratulations to DJ Coach, now, game announcer, Roosevelt Osborne. Now you, uh, now that you mention that, <laughs> those two, is fa like father, like son, honestly. It's uh, both, uh, but him, well, I haven't, I've yet to meet uh, Mr. Osborne, but Boo, just calm, cool, collected, laid back, just out here having fun and it seems like that's what his dad is doing as well. Oh, yeah. Just calm, cool, collected, and out here having fun. <laughs> Playing the juke joint music. <laughs> got my money, got my whiskey. Now the timeout, Detroit Hustle have the ball. Under four minutes left to go here in this fourth quarter, 141-112. Lead Hampton. Looks like he's trying to look for a shot now. Ends up passing it off to Burton. Nice move there by Burton, seeing the uh, the help side defender coming in and was able to readjust and get that layup to fall. Richie Gordon will end up taking that one all the way. Nice little reverse there. Richie Gordon just out here having fun as well as they do have a commanding lead. Kind of looked like it. We see Richie Gordon trying to get an alley-oop here to Kenny Council. I'm not sure if Kenny Council can dunk or not, but Definitely uh, some style points there for Council. Con or, sorry, the hustle come the other way. Hampton couldn't get that one to fall. Thomas will get the running floater. That one's just too strong. And I think with that bucket by Council, everybody has gotten into the scoring box for the Condors today. Uh, you are correct. The uh, Condors are without Khalil McCormick today, so he's the only name on my in my in my scorebook. 
that does not have any points next to him, but since he's not here, I guess you can't really right, right. give him any points. Juwan Hampton with back-to-back -back baskets. 230, I'm sorry, 220 remaining. Richie Gordon trying to show off his ball handles. 143, 118. Richie Gordon trying to show Jawan Hampton that he can do it all. <laughs> so with this victory, back-to-back -back victories, not to mention on back-to-back -back nights, the, uh, the Condors will improve to nine and seven on the season. And I believe that still puts them in the, uh, I believe they're still in fourth place after tonight's it, win. Uh, it ties them, ties them at nine and seven. Uh, I want to say with Owensboro. Let me just check that just to make sure. And it looks like uh, a lot of pickup. Looks like a lot of pickup basketball going on right here within the final couple minutes. As I think both teams have accepted the fate of this outcome. So not for sure if the Owensboro Thoroughbroughs have a game today or tomorrow, but with the win tonight from the Condors, that puts them in a tie for third place with Owensboro. So um, I'm not for sure their head-to-head -head competition, but they're tied for third place after this win right here from the Condors. And that drops the Detroit Hustle down to three and 13. Tough season so far for the hustle, and, and not to mention they are, they do have uh, what seems to be an injury bug going around that is plaguing uh, some of their players to not play or not be here tonight. Injury bug, and as well as, you know, with the semi pro, I guess, you know, everybody's not going to play every game because some players are getting looks for overseas and different leagues. So you might not see the same players every week, each week. So they're a little depleted by injuries and just players going over and playing overseas. And it shows today as the, the Condors are pretty much in full strength with their main guys. And, uh, as you had said, it, their record does not show how good the... That'll be the sixth foul on Burrell. Uh, as Boo Osborne tried to make a fancy alley-oop to himself. Uh, but you were right, it, the Condors don't play like they are. Their record doesn't show how good they are. <coughs> Boo Osborne. Converts on both free throws. Under a minute to go, 50 seconds. Condors with a 30 point lead, 150. 122 now after Hampton converts that layup. Ellen Thomas's three is off the mark. 30 seconds remaining. Dwight Burton makes it all the way. Can't get it to fall. Derry Garrett can't get the offensive rebound to fall. And 20 seconds remaining. Looks like, uh, I was going to say, looks like they might dribble this out, but Kellen Thomas kind of adds insult to injury with that one. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're still shooting the lights out. Jawan Hampton knocks down a three, and if, uh, who's to say if Hampton could have continued this? Oh, can't, can he counsel, can't get the dunk to fall, so I guess I was right, I was, wasn't sure if he could dunk or not. So the final score here in Columbus, Condors improved to nine and seven on the season with the 153 to 125 uh, defeat of the Detroit Hustle and 
Uh, as we had mentioned, the the first quarter, the Condors did not look the strongest, but the remaining three, especially two quarters two and three, putting up over 40 points apiece, they really showed um, that they were out here to get the win tonight. Um, yes, and, and, and congratulations to the Columbus Condors for that victory. Um, give a shout out to the Detroit Hustle as well for playing the game that they played. Watching the, the you know, the Condors, it was like kind of, I haven't seen them lose. I haven't seen them lose a game this year. So for me, it was like, wow, they're down by 15 points. But as the second half, the second quarter came and progressed, as the third quarter progressed, and the, and the fourth quarter progressed, you've seen them get more and more into a rhythm. And I think that's just the makeup of the Condors. All right, well, we will go ahead and take a short break, but when we come back, we will go ahead and wrap things up, and we will have the player of the game to talk to. Who will it be? Make sure to stick around and find out. You're watching TBL Basketball here on The Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Uh Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675.
shots and to score 58 points is 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 a lot. So um, sorry about that. One thing I want to do is just congratulate you on doing that because it's not easy to score 58 points at any level of basketball. So and then to come back the very next day and, and score 25 points and lead your team to a victory. Um, talk to me about that. Um, I mean, this is. I mean, this is high-level basketball. You got, you know, you got G League players. You got former NBA players. So, you know, it's not an easy, you know, task, especially this year with not a lot of players being overseas. You had a lot of high-level overseas players. So, you know, I, I've played on the high level. So, you know, to lock in and just, just be in the zone. You know, I've always been a scorer my whole life. So, once I'm locked in, I'm locked in. Yeah, we saw um, AJ Davis come over, and you guys took a timeout and went over and talked to him. Kind of talk to me about how that impacted your team going forward into the game. Uh, nah, just honestly, anytime we struggle, we tell each other, you know, think about him because he can't play this game right now. So anytime you feel tired or anything like that, it's like, think about him. And he's honestly been getting us through it when we, when we have our battles, when teams go on runs, it's like, hey, we think about him every time we're in the huddle. It's AJ on three, so he's really, he's a part of this winning streak. He's a part of this run that we've been on. So he's really been helping us out, even though he's not on the court with us. All right. And speaking of starting out kind of slow, you guys started off kind of slow in the first quarter. You were down 15. I haven't personally seen you guys lose at all this year. I haven't seen you guys be down too much, but it seems like you kind of start out a little slow and then pick it up in the second half. Is that just, you know, trying to figure out who's going to get going or is it just kind of designed that way? Uh, that was us being old tonight for back to back. Legs wasn't working, so. You know, we had to get in that huddle, yell at each other, and start getting locked in like that. So, uh, with this victory, it moved y'all to nine and seven. Y'all in a three, uh, y'all in a tie for third place with Owensboro. Moving forward, how does that work for the playoffs? How does the playoffs work for you? Guys? Um, we're gonna get to second place. So that's the goal. You know, get to, we kind of first place is kind of out there right now. Kokomo's got to lose some games, but we get to second place and we host. And then for us, it's just getting in the playoffs. We're not scared of being on the road or anything like that. We play well on the road. Just get in and we'll, and we'll get it done. All right. And once again, this is um, I'm Randall Smith Jr. I'm here with Cordell Ballard, a, a Mifflin Puncher product. He's a player, mojo player of the game. And um, just thank you for um, allowing me to interview you today, man. No, thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Back to you, Seth. Thanks, Randall. We have Randall Smith there with Cody Ballard, our, mode, our player of the game. Cody Ballard finishing with 25 points and helping the Condors improve to 9-7 and seven with the 153-125 to 125 victory over the Detroit Hustle. A solid outing all around by all the players uh, scoring in double digits for the Condors, except Kenny Council, unfortunately, but he was right there with nine points. So we will go ahead and wrap things up here for our entire team. For Randall Smith Jr., I am Seth Donahoe. And until next time, you're watching TBL Basketball here on the Score on Air Network.